So the risk of thyroid surgery, the main risk is to a nerve that is uh, that supplies the voice box. We call that the recurrent laryngeal nerve. It runs alongside the windpipe between the thyroid gland and the windpipe and also the esophagus, the gullet. Right? And this particular nerve goes into the voice box behind the thyroid and when we take the thyroid gland out, we are always teasing it off the nerve and it's very very closely applied in some areas. So if we injure that nerve, the, the, on one side you get a hoarse voice. So that's uh, troublesome but it can be corrected surgically using other means. But um, the problem with doing a total thyroidectomy for example, then you put both nerves at risk. If both nerves get injured, then the voice box, the vocal cords come close together, you won't be able to breathe and uh, that, will re that may require you know, opening a hole in the windpipe and putting a tube in. We call it a tracheostomy, right? just to, so that the patient can breathe. So that is an emergency and it's a serious problem. Uh, but of course, it's very, very rare. Okay? And um, Now the second risk factor, if, if it's a hemithyroidectomy, it's not so big a deal, but if it's a total, we are putting these small glands called parathyroid glands at risk. The parathyroid gland, there are four of them. They are stuck behind the thyroid. They're very small and the function is to regulate uh, calcium levels in the body. So while you're doing surgery, there's obviously firstly a risk of accidentally removing them together with the thyroid because they look very similar. All right? um, but it is not common to have that, to, to remove all four because we only really need one to function for it to control the calcium level adequately. Right? But um, during the surgery itself, when we do total thyroidectomy, as we are peeling it off, the, nerve, the glands may, may you know, the function may drop over time for a while and, um, and so for the short term the patients may be hypocalcemic meaning they don't have enough calcium in the blood and the implication of that is that they may need to stay in the hospital a little bit longer for IV replacement of the calcium and of course if it's milder they just need oral medication.